And I feel as if we're going to be working with the Council of Light today. They are a 12th dimensional energy. I twitch a little bit when I channel. It's just the difference between the frequencies and vibrations of the beings that I'm connecting with and where I am in the room. We are the Council of Light, and many of us have gathered in this space as a consciousness to assist in this time with those who are feeling as if they are separate of what is taking place upon the earth consciousness. Many of you, we understand, are observing the activities on your planet and feeling as if the humanness in you cannot possibly be connected to what is taking place. And although we honor the uh, understanding of what that has brought to your experience, we also wish to bring a different message today about the way in which you are connected beyond this earth to all things, but putting in the context of what is taking place here planetarily and the way in which you are assisting it, and we are very pleased to do so. We wish to start with an understanding of consciousness, especially as it relates to your personal experience as well as your collective experience. We have spoken in, in many previous dissertations about consciousness as a concept, and knowing that the energy that you are holds within it many experiences beyond this planetary being, the one that you are focused in right now, it is important to understand. We know that as you have discovered various timelines that you have been a part of in, in past experiences, you have become very interested in how those experiences affect your current reality. And we believe that this was an important part of your transition. Many healers on the planet have been working within the Akashic records. Those records holding many of your experiences, both here as a planetary being in other points of perspective, but also off planet in other dimensional realities. It's important to note that your consciousness holds memory beyond what you are able to perceive in human form. Now, memory in itself as a concept is something that we also wish to address in the conversation of consciousness. Consciousness and awareness or even memory are very separate forms of energetic activity. Consciousness is always vibrating. Consciousness is always changing. In any moment, your consciousness could be measured. And the measurement of that consciousness would never be the same in any moment. It is always changing. The change in your consciousness has to do with several factors. First, Understanding the transparency of your experience with other things, or with all things, we should say. You are being affected in this moment by the consciousness in this room. All beings that are vibrating as human in this space are having an effect on the degree to which your consciousness is vibrating. What that means is they are bringing all of their information from their Akashic record, whether it be planetary or off-planet, to this nonverbal communication. In addition to that, this space, this room that you are all within, holds many energies that you are not in conscious awareness of. There are beings that are here in this space that reside in different dimensional energies. They come for many reasons. Some of them are a part of you. They are here to assist you. They are here to heal you. Some of them are observers. They are observing your planetary experience from their own perspective. And others are here as a part of the collective energy. As a collective consciousness, you are making an announcement to the universe. You see, every vibratory being is announcing to the universe something that is received back. This is how you manifest. Oftentimes, you hold 
a collective energetic vibration that is magnetized and matches many experiences. The beings that are non-physical have just as much weight in the formulation of your consciousness as the physical beings do. This is something that your planet does not always consider. You believe that your human form or your human collective must function on its own in order to reach a certain vibration or heal the planet. But you forget that many of these non-physical beings are here to support the way in which you are awakening your consciousness. So they come with a vibratory offering. And that vibratory offering is assisting your human consciousness or your singular experience to manifest concrete information. Now, what is memory versus consciousness? Memory is a linear timeline. Many of you realize that the density here on this planet that you have accepted will only allow you a certain range of memory in linear format. Now, those of you who have activated your DNA and who have gone above and beyond what we would call a third strand DNA activation have glimpses or moments where you recognize yourself as past, present, or future. It's important to note that this type of experience is happening more fluidly on your planet than ever before. The way in which you are understanding your history is being reintegrated with your consciousness. Now, many of you perceive this as the loss of time. The time that you recognize on the clock is created by you. So if this is the case, the memories that you hold equal to that clock or equal to that calendar must also vibrationally change with your consciousness. Magnetics are amplifying this through Mother Earth. So what the result is, is that many of you are skipping linear time and moving into situations where you are communicating with consciousness that has already been available to you, that is now amplified within your frequency. Now, do you have human memory of this? Again, it very much depends on the way that you're vibrating, your unique soul experience, your DNA, and how you choose to be conscious of that memory. Some of you, are experiencing in your dream states or in your sleep hours very intense manifestations of this collective consciousness, this transition to collective consciousness or recognition of these non-physical beings. What that results in oftentimes is very intense dream state travel or very intense travel during your awakened hours in which you forget perhaps where you were standing in that moment, the conversation you just had, and then you reflect back on linear time. And you are predisposed to having some type of an anchor to the earth. You create that anchor. Now, when we, when we talk about the anchor, many of you feel as if the anchor is your chakras, the energetic areas that hold you or ground you into non-physicality. But beyond that, we would say, human beings create their consciousness as an anchor. You have created as an anchor here your linear time and your calendar. When we look at the way that that has been created, of course, it has been focused in singularity. And now you are moving beyond this singular focus. So here you are as a planetary energy. 
moving beyond singularity, moving beyond singular time, perhaps forgetting your past or experiences that you had just yesterday in your linear time frame. And you may wonder, why is it that things are looking different on the planet? Why is it that these memories that I wish to so remember cannot be perceived? It is because you now have a new anchor. That anchor goes beyond linear time. It's collective frequency, collective energy. Now, has that anchor been fully created yet? We would say from our vantage point, it has not. That isn't detrimental to you in any way, but it often causes confusion. When you're moving through very transitional spaces without a very physically manifested anchor that perhaps you are used to, your current reality can feel very off balance. And we see this happening with many of you. The anchor that we see being created is very interesting here because it is to your choosing the way in which you create these anchors, for example, of time or, or linear calendar energies. Moving into a fifth dimensional consciousness, what we are seeing is the dissolve of time, linear time. And going back to some of the native or ancient cultures in the way that they perceived their calendar year, they were very attuned with the planetary energies. They were very attuned to the sun and the moon and the stars. They understood that their energy was always going to be in balance with the universe collectively through this perspective. And we see many of you going back to using these types of tools to be able to anchor into a collective energy. You are being flooded right now with new information. That information is coming from many sources. As we mentioned, your past earthly lives, your past multi-dimensional experiences. They are all culminating here within your field to assist you as you are rebirthing the planet. But consciousness is always changing. Here on the earth, what we have seen take place is that there were many potential timelines you've created that were aborted by multidimensional beings that came to assist. We chose to speak of this in our last dissertation as a rearrangement of the grid lines. The grid lines within Mother Earth being magnetic are a very easy tool for higher dimensional beings to inject love frequency. And that is truly what has happened. Now you may say, this message has come through loud and clear, yet we do not see the results of that taking place on our planet. Remember consciousness, my friends, and how your consciousness in this very moment is vibrating in alignment with everything and everybody in this space. Your earth is also a consciousness. And what manifests upon her is the same concept as what you have experienced in your singular reality. In any moment, her vibration may be measured. And that vibration is always changing. But it is important to note that we see a shadow earth that is currently being created. Now that shadow earth has a very similar effect on you as what the earth connection you have now is having. They are not yet, they yet fully separate. But we call the shadow earth the third dimensional plane of memory. 
You see, memory is held in your storage banks. And you can envision it as the ultimate file folders coming together in a very large box, pulling and sorting through those, those memories at the Akashic level in your singular experience. Well, Mother Earth has the same, but what's happened here is that she has decided through a shift of consciousness to segregate her Akashic record into two different linear formats. One being a third dimensional plane or earth and another being a fifth dimensional new form of consciousness that is currently being activated by you through your DNA and through many of the decisions and the choices that you are making. Now this shadow earth in particular holds its own set of DNA. What that means is that the potential still exists for that shadow earth, that, that second form of consciousness, to reorganize through its record and reconnect with that fifth dimensional form of consciousness. This has happened throughout history in many multidimensional races. There have been cataclysmic events there has been history that has resurfaced. And through the experience of that history, consciousness was changed. And there was a new request that went out to the universe that this plane of reality, this existence, this star, whatever it was, this planet, needed a new format in order to be able to expand. And so as that format was taking shape, there was a shadow version. And that shadow version held much of the density of what that cataclysmic event caused. The reason for the shadow is that those moving into the light or a new aspect of expansion can actually vision and see the activity as the observer. Many of you are familiar with your shadow selves. You do have a shadow self. And that shadow self can very easily be observed by you at times in which you are ready to expand. Well, we note that the same thing is happening here. Many of you are choosing to form a new anchor, to uplift the planet, and to become observers of those file, file boxes, those file folders of history that are manifesting in a more third dimensional consciousness in a shadow earth. And we believe that that is the most valuable expression of your consciousness that you can uphold. Because the more that you are able to observe in neutrality and use those experiences as the defining frequency, the inspiration to move you away from your own shadow self, the more you are serving. Now, the shadow earth that we mentioned was not something to be fearful of. As a matter of fact, in our observation, we believe that the shadow earth, in envisioning that, is a very uplifting and promising observation. It shows that so many of you are using your consciousness differently, connecting to information that is assembling around you and stepping away from the shadow. We're very pleased to take questions. Why are travelers coming from other dimensions and timelines, and how better do we, can we connect with them? Okay, the Arcturians wish to answer this question. Uh, when you speak of travelers, we define this very broadly as many universal beings who have agreed to come forward in this time to assist. 
the energy and the frequency specifically that is being identified here is one of healer. Because many who are healers on the planet are now through the magnetic grid realignments attracting with interdimensional beings that are here to activate DNA and to serve the human consciousness through its physical experience. We have noted many times that the physical body is making very drastic transitions. These transitions are because you are becoming less physical. You are integrating your your physical and non-physical energy bodies. And anytime that happens, information that is taken into the body can tend to have a very uh, detrimental effect on your physical experience. And many of these travelers, as you so call them, are interdimensional helpers who are grounded here in attraction to those who are conduits, who are assisting in the activation of DNA. This question has to do with reincarnation of the soul. Is it possible that the soul of a sibling who died 50 years ago has come back in my niece 25 years later? And if this is true, how can I still feel the guidance of my sister who has passed? Can our soul be represented in both physical and non-physical form? Second like Archangel Michael stepping in to answer this. As a soul energy, many are drawn to reincarnate here on the earth, especially within their own collective DNA families. There is a reason for this. There is oftentimes a very specific collective agreement between soulmates. Soulmates being mother, father, daughter, son, regardless of that, that interaction of the DNA, there is often a very purposeful type of soul attraction. Now, when a soul reincarnates, we want to make it very clear what the process is of reincarnation, because many believe that human souls must come back onto this earth plane to re-experience their karma. Yes, that is a choice and a decision, and there are many factors that are weighed during this transitional space where a soul is leaving the plane of the earth in order to decide what must be served what is desired to be served, and how universal law affects that soul. In this circumstance in particular, we would agree with the fact that a soul has reincarnated into a body within the same linear timeline of a genetic family. And the reason is that this family in particular is accessing multidimensional information through this being. The way to connect best, because many of you feel as if there has to be um, a problem solved, there has to be information defined in the way these, these situations show up. And what we find is oftentimes when you dig into the problem and you wish to present it or react to it a certain way, it is taking you away from the beauty of what already exists. As this soul has come back and reincarnated, it is here to experience itself again through you in a new perspective. That is all that's taking place. But there is a soul alignment here. There is a collective record that was so desired to be served that it showed itself again in a new physical form. Now, karma in itself is a bit different, and we believe that this situation isn't necessarily related to karmic energy. But oftentimes, there are beings that choose to come back to the earth plane in order to serve some type of a karmic experience. Every one of you, to a certain degree, has brought this karmic energy with you. It is a part of the soul energy. So when you make an agreement to come forth in a human body, you choose to bring a vibrational karmic energy with you that is your record. Now, when souls decide to come back with very specific karma related to a family unit or a soul collective, oftentimes it relates to many, many beings interacting in a very similar timeline, quantum timeline that is significant to those beings that have assembled. And, and we will use an example 
we see patterns oftentimes in families of perhaps abuse or addiction. Many times, these patterns are because a soul has decided to reincarnate and come back into a, a family lineage or a DNA or timeline interaction and serve something that needs to be transcended. And all of the beings that interact with that energy have a very strong intention to be there in order to experience it. So the best thing that you can do when you acknowledge that a soul has reincarnated in another soul body is to enjoy the interaction, is to be very present with that interaction because it is very purposeful and very meaningful to you as an energy. It seems like long-term monogamous heterosexual relationships are going away or becoming obsolete. Some claim that this is progress, revolution. I see it as the beginning of the end of the human race. Is someone or something working to end male and female pair bonding? Instead of the Pleiadians, we are the Pleiadians. And we are pleased to speak about this topic. We first want to say that as you are going through your earth transition, there are going to be many, many experiences similar to this in multiple areas. And if you look at your past history, you can see the pattern by which sexuality has been affected. There have been times in which the dominant male-female partnership or role has been very um, exemplified. There have been times in your history in which the freedom of sexuality has been very exemplified. And we know that many on the planet in this time are choosing other forms of sexuality that are opposite of what they have chosen to reincarnate or incarnate as, be it male or female. Now, this in itself is a manifestation of an energy. So we wish to speak beyond the sexuality because the sexuality itself, the way in which beings interact, although it's very purposeful from creation, and we are happy to, to speak to that, and, and we will, is only a manifestation of your consciousness. So you are speaking to many issues here. And, and we believe that one of those issues is promiscuity, perhaps. Why is it on the planet in this time that the divine masculine and feminine in all of its glory and honor and divinity is not being honored? Well, this, my friends, is a manifestation of your consciousness. The divine feminine and masculine energy can be seen in all of nature. It can be seen within Mother Gaia. It can be seen within your singular experience. When that divine masculine and divine feminine energy is out of balance, there will be manifestations of your consciousness that take place on the planet. It is not our duty, nor is it our responsibility or desire to tell you what is right or wrong in terms of sexuality. But what we can tell you is the way in which you were created and the way in which sexuality should be considered a divine part of your source energy. Many of you understand the basic premise of the story of the Adam and Eve. Now, we look at that as more of a multidimensional history. But you were created in the likeness of the divine masculine and the divine feminine, knowing that you sprang forth from source energy as perspective. You sprang forth as the divine yin and yang, light and dark, masculine and feminine of that one source energy. And the coming together in a sexual act has less to do with that masculine and feminine and more to do with the vibration of creation. When you think about a love frequency, this is where all things spontaneously manifest. We often, as the Palladians, enjoy bringing in the example of how we travel. We often travel as a collective in various forms of light. 
And in order to travel very efficiently through the universe, we use a love-based frequency in union to be able to manifest where we wish to be and what we wish to experience. Human creation was designed in the likeness of this. So the divine masculine and the divine feminine sprang forth from source energy and combined itself into a love frequency to procreate, to manifest, to expand consciousness and the universe. Now what you're finding on your planet is two different things that we feel we should address in this question. First, we would say there is an area uh, that you are speaking of as promiscuity or the neglect of that divinity by having multiple partners. And the other area is perhaps where you feel some are not honoring their true sexuality. They are manifesting here as a male and choosing the life of a female or manifesting as a male and choosing a male partner. Neither of these scenarios is wrong unless they are not held in the highest degree of that love frequency of creation. And there is a very telltale sign to realize what that is about. It is the ego, the reflection of the self. Going back to that divine source, masculine, feminine, you own both within you. You must. And if there is an imbalance in that divine masculine, divine feminine, and the ego is taking itself into a reflection of what it must be outside and making a choice about its divine sexuality from that perspective, it is going to not be equal to a love frequency. What that means is, in that interaction, something is not honored, whether it be the self or whether it be the other. Now, we can look at this as a collective, and we can say perhaps in the promiscuity that you see on your planet, there is a manifestation taking place. And that manifestation is a neglect for the divine, sacred sexuality of the masculine and feminine. And we would agree with that. But that is only a manifestation of your consciousness. Does it come from the root form of sexuality? Or does it come from society and what you have been entrained into as a vibration? Many are not having a sexual encounter to experience a love frequency. They think that they are. But what they are doing is they are actually looking to fulfill themselves in something that they are neglected in, or they feel they are neglected in, or they have been taught they are neglected in. Now we see the other area that you speak of, perhaps, as a bit different. Some that are manifesting in a male form that are choosing male partners can be in a state of divine masculine and feminine balance and love frequency. They can be creating and manifesting in a true alignment with creation. There is no right or wrong here. Yet we do know that some are struggling in that energy. And the reason that they are struggling is many of them are accessing their past information. Remember the general message that was brought in by the council about the way in which your record is becoming more available to you. The history perhaps of the man or of the woman is being confused with the current timeline. That does not make it right or wrong, but imagine that there is something there that is not being fulfilled, similarly to the example of promiscuity. So to make it quite simple, the problem that you see on your planet with sexuality has much to do with revisiting of history and the patterns of history, but also the way in which you've been taken outside of yourselves with the ego to live up to a standard 
that is not the purest fulfillment. And many human beings are trying to receive that fulfillment through the other, through the balance of the other. In order for sacred sexuality in its most divine form to manifest through a love frequency, it must realize that it is of and through itself the balance of the divine masculine and feminine in every moment. And if that is understood, what follows is always most appropriate. Will there be an equal amount of males and females in the fifth dimensional train? It seems as if men and women are already living mostly on different planes of reality. These are the Pleiadians coming in. And we want to revisit the question that was asked previously, and, and we would agree that we see many in the awakening of consciousness that are embodied in their female essence. And there are several reasons for this. First, we want to say that as a societal unit, your male energies have been affected quite differently than your female energies. If you think to the way in which you formed hierarchies here on the planet, and you put the male energy into those hierarchies, you can understand the reason why they have been so separated from their soul. And the layers that exist in that separation from their soul. Another point that we wish to make is that the female energies on your planet are emerging as some of the most prominent spiritual healers or teachers because that female energy is so needed in this time. The imbalance of that hierarchy has come from a dominant male energy existing on your planet. So the way in which that balance vibrationally has manifested is that many females are awakening to their vibrational assignments in this time in order to assist in the balance of that divine masculine and divine feminine. Now to answer your question, will there be less of any one in a fifth dimensional energy? And we would say that is not possible. The reason for that is it is your desire that creates that fifth dimensional consciousness. And your desire is so to be in the balance of masculine and feminine energy and have that partnership that the beings that are male are going to begin to shift their awakening process to bridge into a fifth dimensional consciousness. If you so chose to not have those males present or to be more dominant in one or another, it would be so. But just as your planet is awakening and trickling to a higher dimensional consciousness, little by little, the male energies on your planet are following the same suit in that they have been the caretakers, they have been the providers, they have been the ones most affected by these hierarchies. And as these hierarchies are broken down, many of them are going to be accessing their soul energy as well and stepping in to assist, as many already are. I recently had a group call with a dragon activation with Archangel Michael. I was introduced to my dragon and was it was a feminine, white, small dragon. I don't know anything about dragons and what they do or what my connection would be. Could you elaborate on that? Um, dragon energies have this is Archangel Michael stepping in. Dragon energies have much to do with this the soul. And when we look at the dragon in itself. It is not a physical manifestation, we feel, because as humans, we do not experience the dragon energy and physicality. But when we think of what the dragon energy represents, first we have to consider that the dragon energy holds within it the breath of fire. The breath of fire being very pivotal in how the kundalini, or the, the energy of the soul, is vibrated into source. So oftentimes, when there is an activation of the dragon, it's an activation of the source energy through fire, fire breath, fire kundalini. Now you must consider that the way in which spirit energies show up to you are very unique. So all of you will experience your dragon energy quite differently in the same way you might experience an owl energy differently or perhaps a deer energy differently. But the dragon energy that you experienced was white. 
and how appropriate of cleansing and rebirth and the opening of the sacral chakra and the understanding that baptism has taken place through fire. So the ceremonial practice that was undergone was a baptism of the sacred fire, the kundalini, the activation of the inner dragon. That inner dragon, that kundalini activation, of course, will have very different results as well because you are all unique vibrational beings. When you activate the kundalini, it will bring you closer to what your source energy is guided in this life to be, meaning your vibrational record, but will also have a direct effect on the way in which you perceive that consciousness we have been talking about, the one that's around you, the other beings, perhaps tapping into dimensional record or information through empathy, or also being able to bring in your cosmic family and use that cosmic family in conscious awareness with your gifts. Did you talk about structured water filters and if they're beneficial? The Pleiadians come in to answer this. We believe that any form of structural structured water is very beneficial. And the reason for this is the way in which you structure water has a direct effect at the cellular level. When you speak about machines that do this, we are always very cautious to recommend because we know that intention is extremely important. So when you are looking at technology or evaluating technology that would structure water, it's not so important that you look at the way the technology is, is formed or put together as you do perhaps the beings that formed it. What was the intention or what is the intention? of the technology. We believe it's very important that you also understand that you can structure water yourself. It is quite simple to structure water in a glass or in a container through your own spinning motion and your own intention because putting intention in water is a very powerful and prominent healing tool. That intention in itself will structure the water into whatever you choose. And when that water is placed into the body, it has a crystallized effect because water in itself is a base crystal. It's a crystal form. You are made of it in expansion because you are crystal light. So when you are intentionally structuring your water or even just placing a strong intention into the water before you ingest it, that intention will hold firm within your structure and it will have a lasting effect on your vibration. During an Akashic record clearing, I was told I had a connection to an Arcturian soul group. If this is true, what's the value of knowing this, and how can I benefit from this and use it? And I'm also very attracted to Lemurian crystal. What might that mean? When you are told that you have a council or a group that is a part of your healing activity, it is oftentimes that you are activating a strand of DNA in the moment that is bringing you closer to information. You see, when you consider the 12-strand DNA and the crystallization of that 12-strand DNA, that process is actually reintegrating parts of your own experience. When these collectives come in, such as the Arcturians, oftentimes you have activated a crystalline strand of DNA in which was very important. It reconnected you with your own information and brought in galactic helpers in the form of this family. Now, Arcturians in themselves have a very, uh, and these are the Arcturians, <laughs> I'm very pleased to invite them in. Um, they ha we, ha we are uh, on assignment with the Earth plane. We are the eighth dimensional Arcturians. We take our assignment here very seriously, especially during this time, and many healers are connecting to our vibration or reintegrating their Arcturian DNA in this time for an important purpose, and that is because the transition of the light body is affecting the physical body. Many of you who are going through the ascension process are activating your DNA in a way that is bringing up multidimensional or galactic history. That galactic history is bringing up dense forms of information that is manifesting oftentimes as physical disease, physical discomfort, physical ailment. We are activating many in this time to work 
uh, directly with us, and many have come in collective agreement with us to assist this period on your planet, which we conceive as a one and a half to two year timeline in which the physical body will become closer integrated with the light body. And those who have um, agreed <laughs> to be a part of this collective energy are, are serving with us in the way that we are going to be activating at the cellular level, as well as the DNA uh, information to override where these dense cords of cosmic history lie. The Lemurian energy that you speak of, and, and um, I'm actually getting a very specific Palladian guide stepping in to give us information about this female. The Lemurian uh, energy is also uh, a very prominent part of many humans' experience. When we speak of Lemurian crystal, we are often looking at the way in which Lemurians decided to manifest forms of healing as well as forms of balance because Lemurian crystal has its root base in Atlantis. Now, many of the Lemurians and the Atlanteans were a part of the same collective. They split in a very cataclysmic timeline and took on unique identities. And many of the Lemurians brought their wisdom and knowledge from their Atlantean experience into ancient Lemuria. They used crystalline energies for healing and they anointed beings for full healings and clearings with these ancient crystals. And I want to say what they're showing me because it's really important. Um, I see a Lemurian crystal being placed at the crown chakra on the body and an entire white light uh, clearing, clearing the, um, the chakras, but it goes beyond the chakras. It's actually the aura, the entire structure. So it, it has a clearing effect. And, and you've been drawn to this energy in your healing work to assist many of you. And, and we have focused on the activation side of this with the Arcturians. Many of you are still needing to use healing tools during your activations because there's density that has to be considered. The activating of the, the body is very important. And that's a timeline that we are stepping onto now. Yet at the same time, it depends on the consciousness of the being that comes to you for healing. Uh, their consciousness may be in a state in which density is holding them back from the activation. And in that situation, uh, these types of crystal healings can be very beneficial to clear density and open and prepare the body for activation. I keep seeing the infinity sign. What does this mean? And is this in any way representative of me being connected to a larger collective consciousness community? And, and this is the Pleiadians. Oh, sorry. Okay, we're working with the Lemurians. Uh, Ninth Dimensional Lemurian Ascension Collective. We bring in the, um, the symbol of the infinity as a part of your consciousness. You see, the infinity sign in itself has the ability, just through your connection to it, to take you back to source neutrality. And many of you do not realize this. There are some ancient symbols that, that have very unique healing qualities, meaning that in just the sight of them or the connection to them, they enable you an opportunity to reconnect to source. And this is truly what this symbol is about because the infinity is representative of the source energy within, knowing it never ends, it knows no bounds, it has no beginning, it has no ending, it goes on and on. It is the structural component of any human being. But the reason that this sign or this, okay, this is coming in in a, is a healing code for the being that connected to it. And, and oftentimes what will happen, uh, we want to say uh, first off that your planet is able now more than ever before to receive information in the form of light coded energy. Many of you are familiar with light language and light codes. These are coming in much stronger now to the human planet and the human structure than ever before. And this is exactly what this is. It's a healing code that has come in for this being an individual. Now, the connection to the collective consciousness isn't quite as significant as the shape or the form is in itself. And it is suggested that meditation um, focused on that symbol 
is very important because it is going to assist this being in activating the healing potential that they have here on the planet. Many, many human beings on the planet um, that are in this likeness can also use the infinity symbol as a uh, center point of med uh, meditation to activate the source energy within. But the collective energy that this, this being speaks of uh, has more to do with a, a specific council that's being formed directly for the unique energy that she offers. How can we help to bring the shadow earth in balance and merge back into alignment as a whole? Can we visually connect this into being with all of your support? Is this possible through intention or is this not allowed due to free will? This is the Council of Light coming back in. And, and the shadow earth in itself is a manifestation of your consciousness, just as anything else that has been represented here today. That shadow earth should not put you in fear. In other words, every transition that is walked has some type of a shadow manifestation. Let's take an example. You have a karmic energy within, and that karmic energy, that vibration is often triggered through some very important alignment in your human consciousness. Once that is triggered, you have an experience that takes place. And that experience offers perhaps both light and dark. It is your perception that colors that experience and makes it so. So you can have a very negative karmic experience arise, and through your perception, you can color or create it differently. And this is very similar to what's happening here with the shadow earth. Although history and, and vibrational karma is coming to the surface, your perception of that shadow has everything to do with the way it is either going to be exemplified in your experience or created bigger or integrated with a fifth dimensional energy. And we already see this taking place. There have been many what you would call negative vibrational experiences that have happened on your planet. But there have been many who have perceived those experiences differently. And they have actually created a new timeline. So you can see into the shadow. The shadow can be visible. But it's all about how you use the shadow to create in your experience through your perception of it that allows the healing to take place. You forget that as creators, it's not always about the concrete manifestations. It's about the underlying energy that is allowing those manifestations to come to the surface. So when we look at that shadow earth, and we see it for what it is, we acknowledge it for what it is, we can empathize with what it is, we can see ourselves in it, which is important. We would never recommend that Earth humans separate their identity from that shadow. But as you see yourself in that shadow, it becomes the energy that takes you elsewhere. As you see yourself and others in the experiences on that shadow earth, becomes the driving force that is the desire for you to create more of what's already taken place here in this fifth dimensional consciousness. Would like to speak of the dolphin matrix, please? What are the earth? Uh, what are earth harmonics, and how do they relate to DNA crystallization? Earth harmonics come together through all forms of being, and very similarly, of course, to what has been brought forth in this transmission about consciousness, we must consider that Mother Earth is also a consciousness. So, if you can wrap your mind around all of the essence of Mother Earth, her nature, her skies her waters, the beings that walk upon her, all of those things have a very unique vibration. Those vibrations 
coming together into one sound, one tone, one offering, is the earth harmonic. So you have bearing. You have merit on what that earth harmonic is. The nature that you see on your planet was put here with a multidimensional harmonic that amplifies the grid of Mother Earth. Now this harmonic in itself is the truest energy of collective vibration. So when we speak of harmonic, you're offering an energy to create it, but it's offering something back to you. You see, there's always a two-way flow of information. You are outputting into consciousness and you are receiving from consciousness. So that harmonic that you have been a part of creating, that is now raising and amplifying, is now offering you something. It is offering you expansion. And this is what we see that has taken place on your planet that is so beneficial. Because that harmonic in itself, it has not only been offered by and through and of Earth, it's been assisted multidimensionally by beings off planets and similarly to the message of the council, the grid lines that operate on your planet have been amplified in order to raise this harmonic. So what you receive back is actually more of yourself. If you could imagine taking the highest and best parts of your experience, placing it into a box and having it expand, and then opening that box as a gift and receiving it back to you as an energy. This is exactly what the Earth Harmonic is. You are affecting it and it is having an effect on you. Now you may ask, can the Earth Harmonic lower? in its vibration or its frequency, and we would say yes, because that has happened here. When your Earth was first formed, it was a multidimensional being, and it had a very different harmonic than what it has today. It was not affected so much by your earthly experience as of yet. In its purest state, it offered a harmonic that was multidimensional, and many beings sprung forth into form, through collective manifestation using that harmonic. You also have a harmonic. Your harmonic is equal to the combination of all things within your field of awareness, of consciousness. And you know this, perhaps your emotional body tells the tale of your vibration as equal to a harmonic. There are days in which everything in your world may seem ugly or bad or dark. And the harmony of your life is not flowing. It's not giving you grace and ease and love and peace. But there are days in which the harmony of your life flows beautifully and everything fits into place. And it is the same with the earth. So this harmonic has been affected not only by you, but by all things. By intention, by many multidimensional beings that wish to assist in the Earth Ascension timeline that have brought the Earth grids into an alignment where a lower vibrational consciousness could not affect this harmonic any longer. And we would say that there is a lower vibrational, dense consciousness on your Earth that has affected the harmonic of Mother Earth. That has now been rectified. You have a new opportunity. That opportunity is open for all beings to accept it. And we believe that this harmonic will not lower. We look at potential timelines that exist within the collective. You have potential timelines that you have created that you may match. And the Earth Collective has potential timelines that it may match. And we are always evaluating those potential timelines because they also affect our own expansion. And what we have come to realize is that that earth harmonic is serving you well, and you are serving it. And the more that serving takes place, the more that harmonic will continue to raise. That affects all things consciousness, and that is good.
Has the position of our solar system within the galaxy changed and moved closer to the center of the galaxy in recent years? And does this represent an exponential growth in consciousness that has taken place? Yes, this is the Pleiadians, and we would like to speak of the location of the Earth. And as the grids were shifted, as the beginnings of the grids were active, activated or amplified, there was a new timeline that was created. So when you think back to your linear history and you think of the Earth being in a different location in the solar system, it's very uh, equal to the conversation we brought forward previously about the way you anticipate linear time and you serve your memory. The Earth is now accepted and created a new timeline. And in that new timeline, you have a new location in the solar system. Now this also has to do with magnetics because the universal frequency or magnetic of the planet is offering a vibration that is different. And that in itself is going to attract a different location and different planets as well. This has everything to do with this new harmonic and your consciousness. You see, the location that you have chosen, the one that you have magnetized, is because you have vibrated into that space attracting all things equal to it. And the effect that you have is two-way as well. You have partnerships with planetary energies and star systems to affect them, to affect their expansion. And you have attracted just the right location to be able to do that. It's very similar to soulmate relationships or partnerships. When you attract a soulmate or a partner, it is offering you an opportunity or a vibration and when you accept that, you are both receiving exactly what is needed. Will those who move to a fifth dimensional timeline experience a change in their collective history? For example, wars and the Holocaust that have occurred in the previous timeline will not exist in the new one. This is the Pleiadians coming in to explain this. It is your choice. And, and this is something that we must explain as free will. Because as you create these anchors as you are free to create consciousness and expand, you are free to also choose your timelines. Now, the reason that your linear history has stayed the same as you remember it is that you place energy into it. Many of you recount history, you teach history, you speak about history. It's something that's very important to you. And because it has been that important in your energy, you have maintained it in the linear fashion that you have. Now, we must bring in, of course, the conversation of the way that the planet has changed in its, in its location of the solar system. You found yourself in a new location because of your consciousness. This can also happen with timeline energy. So the way in which you have chosen a timeline can actually bring past history back to support um, what we say is a healing of karmic energy. In other words, if that history was so dense that it was not yet served by you as a collective, you may choose to bring it into this new timeline so that it can be served through you in some way. It's very similar to the explanation about the soul that reincarnated. It might have chose to come back with some karma that it needed to heal and revisit. Well, as a collective, you will make a collective decision, an offering based on your vibration. And through that collective decision, you will choose what aspects of history you feel you have not healed, the ones that you need to remember and revisit in order to transmute. Being that we're at the Rudolf Steiner house, uh, could you tell us, was Rudolf Steiner a being of higher consciousness or an ascended master? Yes, both. Um, Gosh, Could we speak with him? Yeah, we can. Yeah, he doesn't like to be considered that at all. <laughs> um, and I will speak on behalf of him because... Uh, so I will just explain what I'm experiencing. I'm experiencing the soul of Rudolf Steiner, who's very hesitant to want to come in and say that he would be acknowledged as a master energy. But at the same time, there's a collective that comes in that supports that master energy in him. And in particular, he wants to say that his vibrational record here is not finished. So in many respects, the reason why some of his teachings are still coming up on the planet um, is that 
he is living in a parallel frequency in which some of the work that he has done is going to be coming back to the planetary energy and expansion. Uh, there's a desire for that, uh, and he is assisting in that. That's why this council energy comes in. There are many souls um, that were also a part of um, what looks to be crystallization of information. You know, we, we, we've been taught to learn in a less sovereign energy than what we have available to us today. And regardless of what you may think about his teachings, it really has its root in sovereignty and, and free will and that bringing that energy, that creative energy to the surface. And this is something that we're revisiting right now on the planet, especially because there are many collective groups of children coming onto the planet, as well as um, other beings that have been affected by the, the loss of their creative energy through their misinterpretation of that sovereignty that they are. It's not about sovereignty being offered. It's about sovereignty that you are. And so he considers himself to be working towards mastery in the dimension that he is in. It's a different dimension than the earth plane right now, and he's continuing his work in a multidimensional way, but it will be coming back to the earth, and he actually knows that this parallel timeline is going to intersect with an earth timeline here in the next couple of years that's going to bring up a new type of um, what looks like um, collective form of consciousness or manifestation, like I see these centers, um, these various centers being opened or formed and a lot of people coming through, coming through them and they all connect. So they're not separate. Um, they all interconnect and they're working on something. They're working on something that's similar in the way that he did his work. Um, it might've been looked at as very singular pockets of singularity, but there's some essence of that that could assist in the rebirth of the planet that's going to be put together and, um, and he's very excited to actually come back and be able to do that with the assistance of the multidimensional beings that are here in this collective, as well as many on the earth plane. He's just waiting for that timeline to intersect. And, um, and I believe that it will. He's showing me that it will. So is he coming back in a physical form or just working through other beings? He has a choice right now. He says to be able to come back either way. Um, he believes that he would like and very much enjoy to come back in physical form because that is um, what he he knows he's been able to make the most impact as in physicality. Yet at the same time, he knows that um, there are some things that have to take place for him first in this parallel timeline that he is um, going to integrate. So he would be bringing his teachings back in a in an expanded format and. Um, he could do it either way, he says. It is really his choice and his intention. And although it is not time yet, he believes currently in this moment of vibration that he is, that the human form of him would like to come back. And, and he says also um, his soul energy is, is um, it's fragmented into other beings on the earth. So he's actually supporting other beings on the earth through soul energy that are working on similar types of of teachings and practices right now. Um, so he actually feels he is here um, in human form in many others. Is there any teaching you'd like to share with us today before we close? Well, he shows me a map. He shows me a roadmap, actually. And um, he places it right inside of our heart. And he fans it out in all of these different areas in front of me and, and shows they lead to all these different areas of things that we brought in with us. And what he wants us to understand is that, the, that we are very complex beings. The complexity that we have brought here into physical form, it really goes beyond our knowing. We have very strong desires and we come with very different um, ways to perceive um, the earth the earth plane. And he's understood now more of this as he's been a part of this parallel timeline in a different dimension. He can really see the way that consciousness works through us as singular beings that are connected to all things. And he shows me these cords or these roads on these, this map being desire, but, but having a strong pull to things that we've done before. And, and he wants to say that the depth of your creativity, the depth of your desire, it doesn't just come from this life. If there's something that you so desire to do here or 
you feel pulled towards. It, it really has this multi-dimensional common thread, these layers that he shows me. It's like these cords get really big and thick and colorful. He says, that's why it's so important to follow that, that roadmap. And it might not be just one thing. You have to explore them all because when you do that, they connect to your DNA, they activate your DNA, and they actually make imprints here on the earth. And, and this is the way that he loves to teach and he says that that roadmap that's in our hearts is available to everyone and everybody. It's, it's our choice to follow those roads. And when we don't, we cut off our lifeline. And it doesn't just affect us, it affects the whole earth. And so we're not just allowing ourselves something fun or unique or creative. We came with that experience for all things. And that's what he knows now. And so he's really wanting to bring that roadmap of his teachings to the surface and, and place that in a bigger awareness for others here.